Hi, Stephen from Owner Disown. Well, look what I bought. It's the Dell G5 Special Edition with the Ryzen 7 4800H and also the RX 5600M graphics card. So it's an all AMD laptop. So that's great to see. Now, um, you know, the objective of this is just a first look, thermal test, a few games, you know, to test and see what the, uh, the frame rates are, followed by the full review. So make sure you put in the comments below what you'd like me to test for that. Now, there's various options available. Uh, for $880, you get the Ryzen 5 4600H, and uh, that uh, only comes with 8 gigabytes of RAM. At least it's two sticks, so that's a uh, dual channel. And uh, you, for $1,050, you get uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM, but that does step it up from the 60 hertz panel to a 144 hertz panel. But you only get a pokey 256 gigabyte SSD. Now, for $1,200, you get the, uh, the Ryzen 7, the 4800H, 8 core CPU. You still get the 16 gigabytes of RAM and you get the 512 gigabyte SSD. And my model, the 30 $1,300, you know, that steps it up to a one terabyte SSD. And uh, of course, you still get the 144 hertz panel. So the lid, like the rest of the chassis, is plastic. It's a silver type color, metallic type finish. And the central Dell logo is reflective and it shines a light quite nicely. I actually don't mind it too much. So on the left hand side, we have the power port. A mini display port, I like that. HMI 2.0, a USB Type A, the Ethernet jack, and a USB C port with uh, the Display Port Alt mode. And here on the right hand side, we have the SD card reader, which is nice to have, except it's half of the way in. We have a combo headphone mic jack, two more USB 3.2 uh, Type A ports, and a wedge lock. Now the back has quite an aggressive styling. I actually do quite like it, you know, although it does, you know, look like a gaming laptop. You've got the G5 Special Edition there engraved on the back. And of course, you have two rear air vents for the air to come out. So the keyboard deck is all plastic like the rest of the chassis. It's black, shows a few smudges. Uh, of course, you've got a large trackpad. Again, it's with Windows Precision uh, and it works fine. The uh, keyboard now. For $30, you can get a four zone RGB keyboard. You know, I thought I did that and I didn't. So consequently, I've got just red keys. The keycaps are red, you know, so bear that in mind for $30, you might as well go for the RGB. You do have a separate number pad and the key spacing is quite large, although the keys themselves are quite small. And what you've got here is on the G key here, if you press uh, that, it activates the Max fan and the Alienware command center. Um, high performance mode. So the underside is a brownie type grey plastic. Doesn't look too appealing to me really. Um, easy to get off, you've got Phillips head screws and there you can see the air intakes. So blocked off here but the fans do have air intakes. And you've got sizable speaker grills here at the bottom. So once inside we have the 51 watt hour battery and this is obviously if you get the larger battery It'll extend into here. So I have the uh, two and a half inch drive, which accepts seven millimeter drives. Uh, no connecting hardware at all, so you have to go get it all yourself. This is a shame, but there you go. Now you do have two M.2 slots. Uh, mine's a, a Hynix drive, I believe. So at least you've got plenty of storage, certainly, certainly with this option with a smaller battery. But if you get the bigger battery, you still have two M.2 slots. And you have the killer 1650X uh, Wi-Fi card, that's Wi-Fi 6, and download speeds of games are pretty good. I was getting a good 63 megabytes per second downloading uh, my games. Now you do have two slots of RAM, so it's running dual channel, that's good. Um, even the base configuration runs dual channel, so that's, uh, that's good. And no doubt this is probably the GPU and the CPU here. And you do have actually got, got two shared heat sinks, of course, and one separate one here for the GPU. You do have to have quite big fans. Um, the heat sinks themselves aren't very wide, you know, because we've got a central hinge system here, um, but they are quite deep. So there's, there's a bit of surface area there, not too bad. And that's pretty much it. So anything below full brightness shows PWM flicker. And when you disconnect the power source, even at full brightness, you can see it. And here's the screen compared to my HP Omen 15T. 
Certainly the Omen is a brighter panel, um, but the colours actually are okay on the Dell G5. We've got 95% of sRGB, 65% of NTSC, 70% uh, of Adobe RGB, and 70% of the DCI P3 colour space. Now as for backlight bleed, you know, it's not too bad. There's a little bit at the bottom right hand corner, I'd say, but all, all in all, it's okay. So here we're running ADA64 stress test. And uh, as you can see, you know, the CPU here is running at 100 degrees Celsius, which uh, corresponds to the CPU, you know, core temp here, 100 degrees. So that's running pretty on. It's only just been running a few minutes. Um, interestingly, if you're looking at the Alienware command center, you have this option here where it says it's 75 degrees. So I'm not sure what that, uh, that temperature is at all, but it does show you the fan speed. So 99%, and this is on the uh, you know, auto profile. Now you do have various different uh, thermal profiles here, which you can actually even create. So I've created one even with a, like a max fan profile, and uh, we'll see if that makes any difference. So yeah, even using the max fan, you are still at 100 degrees Celsius, and that's corresponding here with the, the graph, you know, within the, within the Ada 64 itself. Now it's holding a clock rate of around about 2,950 megahertz. The system feels a little bit sluggish. Now it's saying here the CPU power is 105 watts. That's insane, isn't it? Um, so let's see what power profile we're on here. We're on a balanced profile. So let's uh, just switch it to, to the Dell profile. Still 105 watts. So within the Fusion app, you can actually create, as I say, various fan profiles here what i've done um called i call fan profile uh you know we'd have it of course auto managed have an offset you can have it up to max or you can create a fan curve here so that's what i've done here i've created this type of fan curve we'll see how it gets on in cinebench so it's saying that the temperature is 92 degrees and the cpu power here is now 63 watts it's pretty high isn't it that's why it's running pretty hot i think now it's holding a fairly decent clock rate in the Cine bench here, uh, 3,522, so that's not too bad. And the temperature, you know, 95 degrees now, and even, yeah, 96. So it's getting pretty warm. 3,907. So the AMD software that's installed is the, you know, Radeon Lite software. Update the drivers and you get the full software here. Now the first thing you'll notice it says that the AMD FreeSync, it's not supported because you do need a FreeSync compatible display. So that's a shame indeed. Um, now you do have, it's called here, Radeon en Enhanced Sync. You have to turn that off and on. And that basically is an alternative VSync mode that minimizes visual tearing and lag, but doesn't limit frame rates. So it's probably an AMD V-Sync option. So let's see how that compares with that being on and off. So here we have the enhanced sync on, and uh, you'll notice, I mean, temperature's still high, isn't it? You know, 105 watts, 97 degrees. This is with max fan now as well. So anyway, so let's, I don't see any tearing particularly. I don't see any noticeable difference either. Um, so there you go. So perhaps it does have uh, free sync, it's just we just don't know about it. And here we have the Alienware Command Center high performance mode activated. The fans do crank up, but look at it, 115 watts and 100 degrees Celsius. What, you know, what is Dell thinking of here? So Far Cry 5 Ultra settings, the Asus Tough A15, the 1660 Ti got 83 FPS, while well, the Dell G5 Special Edition got 77. So it was a little bit way off there. All right, so now I've got Shadow of the Tomb Raider DX12 highest settings, and I've activated the max fan option. And so the CPU actually fluctuates here between, you know, like 82 degrees up to about 100 degrees. Uh, so, uh, but still it's pushing a lot of watts, like 105 watts. Um, but I'm encouraged here that the CPU is uh, actually running cooler. Uh, the GPU itself 
that's running a bit hotter, that's at 83 degrees and about 28 watts. And in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, DX12 highest settings, we got 70 FPS, which was pretty similar to other 1660 Ti laptops actually. Um, the uh, tough A15 had a turbo mode which boosted it by 3 FPS, but it was ahead of the Helios 300 with a 1660 Ti. So as you can see in Overwatch, you know, it typically runs anywhere between you know, the mid 80s to mid 90s. So Dell shipped a 240 watt power pick. Okay, fair enough because here's a 231 from the uh, Mech G3. So, you know, but look at the size of it, it's huge. And when you consider the Asus G14 chips with a much smaller brick, you know what a Dell thinking here, it's certainly not very portable. It's fairly thin, but it's absolutely huge. So, first impressions, well, it ran freaking hot, very hot. You know, I don't know why they're having to push 105, 115 watts, whatever, to this uh, CPU. You know, other competing laptops, we're looking at 35, 45 watts. It just doesn't make any sense. So it runs very hot, uh, hence props, that's why you've got that huge kick-ass power brick, you know. Uh, this is a shame, but the panel is not bad, you know, still on the fence, does, does it have free sync or not? It certainly says it doesn't, uh, but I couldn't see any tearing, you know. Um, Ghosting-wise, in game I thought I could see a bit of ghosting, but in the ghosting test it seemed to be pretty good. But, you know, the colour accuracy is fairly decent, but it's not that bright, which is a shame. But still, it's not too bad. So anyway, I hope you found that useful. Remember, put in the comments below what you like me to test, and I'll see you next time. Bye.